This video is sponsored by NVIDIA AI. After a decade of failed attempts and endless mockery, it seems like Mark Zuckerberg's PR team are doing everything possible for something to land. You see, for years, ostensibly, Zuckerberg didn't seem to care at all about his public image, wearing the same casual uniform of jeans and a grey t-shirt. He even told interviewers that this was his entire wardrobe, but also that he didn't have to waste his brain power on making a decision. But since then, the tech billionaire has become hated by everyone, constantly hit by controversy after controversy. Meanwhile, his persona was so strange that it was nearly impossible for him to convince people that he wasn't actually a robot with human skin. Can you circle all the traffic lights, please? You actually did it. That is very impressive performance. Everyone everywhere saw Zuck as a reptile. Even with his recent appearances in the Octagon, the videos of him surfing and his deep fake beard, has his PR team finally turned a corner? Or is the facade gonna slip once again? And if so, why is Zuckerberg doing all of this? Why is he trying to change his public persona so badly? Well, even before Zuckerberg created Facebook, he's had his problems with how he's perceived by others. When he created the website Facemash, fellow students were outraged, and he was eventually brought up on disciplinary charges. He had used photos of other people without their consent. It didn't win him any friends. But Zuckerberg was allowed to continue his studies and build Facebook using Harvard's name and credibility. Judging by his company's more recent history, he clearly didn't learn anything about personal data from the whole episode. But he also clearly didn't care about the repercussions either. In this case, there weren't any. And for the next decade, it seemed like Zuckerberg didn't put any thought into how he looked to the public. At every event he went to, the future billionaire wore the same combination of dark jeans and a grey t-shirt, trying to replicate the Steve Jobs look. And this did the job it needed to do at the time. This was Mark Zuckerberg as the genius prodigy super nerd. His apparent innocence and childish appearance matched up with how people thought of Facebook back then. He didn't want people to consider what the company was really doing, or his views on the quote dumb fucks using his own site. People were actually happy to entrust the most intimate details with him and his website, and they had no idea that they couldn't be trusted. It didn't really matter that Zuckerberg was awkward and uncomfortable in front of the camera though, it was clearly just what he was like. Take a look at this interview with Mark Zuckerberg from 2004, back when Facebook was in its infancy. The, the magnitude of what you think you've launched, how big do you think your product or your service is? Well, it's impossible to tell. When we first launched, we were hoping for, you know, maybe 400, 500 people. Harvard didn't have a Facebook, so that's the gap that we were trying to fill, and now we're at 100,000 people, so who knows where we're going next. Um, this was well before he'd had the motivation or the resources to train himself for the camera, but his authenticity and his earnest enthusiasm comes off well. He does seem a lot more likeable and alive than he would in 10-15 years time, but it would take over a decade for his nerdy persona to stop working. Facebook had seen countless updates and redesigns over that time, billions had poured in, and with Facebook's meteoric rise came a huge hatred towards Mark Zuckerberg himself. In 2020, when the social network was released, it painted a pretty unflattering picture of Zuckerberg. His depiction on screen by Jesse Eisenberg was calculated, cold, and ruthless, giving the impression of someone who betrayed his friends and colleagues to take control of the business and make more money. While Zuckerberg did deny the allegations and said the movie was completely unrealistic, his protests mostly fell on deaf ears, and the film's release also coincided with a set of lawsuits from his former founders, who all won multi-million dollar settlements for their parts in Facebook's history. While lots of it was just a part of the film's story, it was too close to the truth for it to not hurt Zuckerberg's public image, and by 2014, things had only gotten worse. Zuckerberg's public appearances were few and far between, but when he did enter the public eye, it rarely went well. People were already accusing Mark of being some kind of robot or lizard or robot lizard hybrid. This was likely a result of PR training gone wrong, and you could see how awkward this had made him. It looked like he was trying to calculate his responses before he actually reacted to anything. Then in a public Q&A session, he made this mistake which only confirmed people's fears. But it is gonna bother you because you're human, and, and I was human. I am human, still. Um. It would be the first of many uncomfortable mistakes to come. Each time he accidentally played into the joke, it only got worse. If only Zuckerberg and his team knew how to make good YouTube videos, maybe then he'd be more popular. But you don't even need a team to make good YouTube videos. You can make great videos without anyone even editing it, which is where NVIDIA comes in. NVIDIA AI is the world's most used AI video creator with over 10 million users across 150 plus countries. It's the only AI video creator out of 20 plus tools that I've tried that puts you in the driver's seat and works as your personal sidekick to help you with the painstaking tasks of scripting, editing, and finding relevant footage so that you can bring your ideas to life, or just using simple text prompts. You just start with a simple text prompt and it creates the first rough draft for you. Hey everyone, today I'm diving into the fascinating journey of one of the most influential tech figures of our time, Mark Zuckerberg. 
From there, you can get creative and fine tune your video using just text prompts in ways you'd never imagined. Want to change the intro? Done. Want to find better footage for a scene? Done. Want to translate your video to Spanish? Done. And the best part, you can even clone your voice and make it narrate the video in your voice in any language. Are you curious about how a college student turned his dorm room project into a global tech empire? Today, I'm diving into the fascinating journey of one of the most influential tech figures of our time, Mark Zuckerberg. This will end up saving you hundreds of dollars every month, and it does the job of more than 10 tools packed into one, all for just $20 a month to start with. Now, I know a lot of people see AI as a threat to human jobs getting replaced by AI, but instead with NVIDIA AI, you're just leveling up your skills because it allows you to bring your projects to life projects that would be out of reach before. Now you can try NVIDIA AI for free, but if you're serious about video creation, you can get a pay plan that starts at just $20 a month, which is the one that I have, and it removes the watermark and gives you access to voice cloning, in addition to high quality stock footage. Just go to the link in the description and use my code MOON to get twice the number of video generation credits in your first month. It was particularly ironic that the creator of what had become the social network came across as one of the most antisocial people ever. Everyone everywhere began to think of him as this inhuman puppet master, tugging at the strings of society with his immense power over social interactions. His influence was invisible, but people could tell it was there. Zuckerberg's public image was always closely linked with Facebook's public perception. For the next few years, both of them would suffer from a long list of controversies. While 2016 might have been a great financial year for Facebook, seeing them nearly double their profit, it was the beginning of the end for their brand. 2016 was also the year it became impossible for people to ignore their control over public discourse. Facebook's own researchers had released studies claiming people were responsible for their own echo chambers, but the years to come would prove them wrong. In the pursuit of making the site as addictive as possible, Facebook only showed people things they thought they would agree with. It was a part of what made the 2016 election in the US one of the most divided and bitter contests yet. As minor controversies and public criticism kept on coming, Zuckerberg could no longer hide behind his jeans and t-shirt public image. And this is when he began the first of his rebranding campaigns. This one, which began in 2017, focused on making him look like a politician. His Facebook posts, which used to be cold and corporate, now showed him in board meetings with military generals or dressed up in a racing uniform with a NASCAR driver. Each post came off like it was designed to make him look more presentable. Then there were the countless photos of him talking to world leaders. It seemed like he was setting himself up as their equal, and people speculated he could be laying the foundations for a presidential campaign of his own. It never panned out. Either Zuckerberg was either planning a run in the first place, or he lost his nerve. It didn't help that Facebook was about to get the worst press it ever had. In 2018, a scandal broke which destroyed the last shreds of trust people still had with the site, as well as in Zuckerberg himself. It was a massive breach of trust. Cambridge Analytica, a firm that specialized in political advertising, had gained access to tens of millions of people's user data through the site. They'd taken it and made profiles and groups of voters, selling the information to various political campaigns so that they could target their own adverts more effectively. Now, Facebook didn't actually sell the data to the firm, but they had let thousands of third-party apps harvest their users' data through the site. They got their profit from that, and they asked no questions about where all this private information was going. Once they began to shut it down, it was already too late. It wasn't so much the scandal that hit Zuckerberg, instead it was what happened in the aftermath. There were the fines and calls for regulation, but they never really amounted to anything substantial. Facebook was too rich for it to really hurt them at all. The US government was keen to look like they had any kind of control over the situation though, so they pulled Zuckerberg in for questioning. First, he was put in front of the Senate, but it soon became clear how little they actually understood about it all. A lot of the time, it felt like watching a kid trying to teach their grandparents how to use a computer. In one particularly disappointing moment, Zuckerberg was asked how Facebook actually made money if it was free, like it was somehow going to expose them. There will always be a version of Facebook that is free. It is our mission to try to help connect everyone around the world and to bring the world closer together. Well, if so, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. Another senator asked him how many data categories they store. How many data categories do you store? Does Facebook store on the categories that you collect? The Congress hearing wasn't much better, with one member of government seeming to get confused over the difference between Twitter and Facebook and what they actually are. But it wasn't the actual content of the hearings that people remember. It was the way Zuckerberg acted. It gave a completely different impression than the carefully choreographed stage pictures he put online. Under the spotlight, Mark was incredibly uncomfortable. Every time he blinked, it looked like he was trying to remember to do both eyes at the same time. When he drank water, it was like he was trying to replicate something he had only ever seen people do. He even used a booster cushion to make himself look taller while sitting down. 
or maybe they had given him a chair that was too small just to mess with him. But the internet nonetheless was predictably merciless, and the jokes probably hurt a lot more than the fines or the great threat of regulation did. For someone who'd spent years trying to build a public image that people actually liked, even with a giant Hollywood movie, it was all back to square one. A reputation isn't something you can just buy, even if you're one of the richest people on the planet. Now Facebook can make back the fine 10 times over, but the humiliation would last forever. While money might not buy you a good reputation, Zuckerberg really put that to the test. He started throwing millions at tons of different charities, as well as making sure that the newspapers reported on every single donation. It was a tiny portion of his overall net worth though, so whether it really meant anything is up for debate. But when the election came around in 2020, Zuckerberg was keen to avoid a scandal this time. He held out longer than most on banning Trump from the platform, while generally keeping Facebook out of the news with only a few slip-ups. But being silent and avoiding the public eye wasn't going to last long for Zuckerberg. Other billionaires and tech moguls had turned it into yet another competition. Instead of just competing over who was the richest, they started pushing themselves into the spotlight as much as possible. Elon Musk was a master at this. For years he'd been called the darling of the internet. People were comparing him to Iron Man. He was always popping up in films and TV shows, usually just as himself. And like any good empire, they needed a cult of personality. When just being visible wasn't enough, Musk would then push forward whatever controversial opinions he think would make his name trending again. When he bought Twitter, it was clear that he wanted out of it. If he could control some level of the public discussion, he could keep himself in the spotlight. And it clearly worked, even if the response hasn't been as positive as he would have hoped. Other billionaires like Bezos took a different path. He'd bought the Washington Post in 2013, but as the PR arms race went on, he started actively using it to push himself into the spotlight as well, and using it to clear any controversies like when his pics were revealed. A decade later, when he stepped down from the day-to-day -day running of Amazon, he got even more closely involved. As lots of the old leadership at the paper retired or moved on, he picked his own people to run the show. Now, there's no evidence of direct interference in what the paper publishes, but you would be hard-pressed to find any decent criticism of their owner. It isn't the only way they've set out to manipulate the masses. While Elon and Bezos have been trying to maximize their public profile, they've also been pushing a new image to match. Both of them have been trying to play into whatever masculinity they can cling onto. Bezos with his cowboy hats, leather jackets, and fluorescent Miami shirts, whilst Elon has aligned himself with the right, whilst also changing up his style. It's clearly become a competition between them. You can be sure they're still looking at each other's vast empires with tape measures in hand, trying to figure out who's really the richest. But competing over who's the manliest opens up a whole new playing field. Zuckerberg has been in this game as well. It's been the perfect opportunity for him to try and escape the negative attention he's gotten over the past decade. Decade. There's already been evidence of him using Facebook and his other platforms to boost his own image and deflect criticism. In what they called Project Amplify, positive news stories and things that showed Facebook in a good light were pushed to the front of their platforms. In 2021, they also rebranded the entire company, although they insisted it wasn't because of the many controversies associated with the Facebook name. Facebook, which by this point owned tons of other apps like Instagram and WhatsApp, became Meta. And while the Metaverse itself didn't really ever take off, it's still been one of the most effective rebrands in recent history. It's at least gone better than Twitter's rebrand under Master X, which still hasn't really stuck with most people. The name change coincided with a change in Zuckerberg's public persona as well. He's been at the vanguard of this new way for tech billionaires to advertise themselves. It's been much more effective than any of his previous campaigns. Take his new interest in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and MMA, for example. Over the past few years, he's been clearly working hard at it. His progress, at least for an amateur who's now into his 40s, has been very impressive. Suddenly, he's joining all these podcasts with Lex Freeman, Joe Rogan, and talking about it. And it's a massive shift from the computer nerd persona he showed off for years, or his strange world leader phase that ended with his Congress hearing. It could just be part of his new competition though. Physical stability is another thing that you just can't buy, so it's understandable they'd be competing over it. Musk even challenged Zuckerberg to a public cage match, although it never really went anywhere in the end. And it's unlikely either of them were that serious about it, as it was yet just another PR move. It seems that way because their whole public rivalry has clearly been useful for both of them. They put both of their names into the news again, with a potential fight making a much bigger splash than their ongoing Twitter war. And with the rise of the UFC, it was a perfect mix. It also drowned out the negative press both were getting at the time. And while Elon hasn't really done anything to make it look like he's actually interested in the sport, it does seem like martial arts is a legitimate interest of Zuckerberg's. He's at least seemed a lot more natural and comfortable in MMA shorts than he is speaking in front of crowds or doing interviews. And as I mentioned, he's been going on a bunch of podcasts, a move which other billionaires have taken to push themselves further into the public eye all to help the brand image. When he went on the Lex Freeman podcast, he even sparred with him afterwards, blending the two things together. But this isn't the only thing Zuckerberg has been doing to look more relatable to the public. Recently, he posted a video of himself surfing with an American flag in one hand and a beer in the other. 
It's a hobby that he's been doing for years now, the surfing part at least. However, years before, this was actually a source of one of his many humiliating moments. A camera caught him with his face absolutely covered in sunscreen, like the face paint of a clown, but now he's figured out how to use it to his advantage. He's also finally grown out his hair after keeping the same short style for decades. It's hard to tell whether it's been helped along by a hair transplant though, like the one that Elon Musk certainly had. He's also started just dressing so casual, chilling in Hawaii, always seeming to have fun, not being that political, taking the piss out of other billionaires, and now he's even wearing chains in interviews, and seemingly acting way less robotic at events. And it does seem like he's enjoying this persona more than all of his previous ones, and it seems with the rise of Metastock that it's actually working. Whether it's authentic or not, or if he's just faking it, is another matter entirely. And people aren't just going to forget all the reasons they don't like him. But all of these massive PR changes are working, and it's directed attention away from Meta's current problems to Meta now seeming like the future. Even though right now the Federal Trade Commission is preparing to go to trial with an anti-monopoly case versus Meta, this has all been hidden under the bush. But if they're successful, Meta could actually be forced to give up some of its most successful apps like Instagram and WhatsApp. And with Facebook slowly dying as its user base gets older and the Meta us failing to materialize, it would put the company on very thin ice. Every court is vulnerable to the pressure of public opinion. So if people aren't clamoring for the death of Meta and a robot lizard like Zuckerberg, their lobbyists will have an easier time pulling the strings and the lawsuit could get pacified. Now people are surprised about Zuckerberg's so-called transformation because it's the first time he's even closely resembled a real person. But that might fade over time, although it has certainly done one thing that Meta and Zuckerberg needed right now, which is changing the conversation. If people are talking about the photos of Mark with a fake beard, then they aren't talking about Meta's awful privacy record, they're meddling with society, or any other major problems. With any luck, this deflection won't work and Zuckerberg will still have his day in court.